Hello, welcome back. Uh, report from Tezuon. Uh, more fireballs being sent at my horror marches. And Zoko has any profit. Uh, our god came back. This is kind of cool. We lost a level of water magic, but we gained a level of death magic, which we didn't even have. That's kind of cool. Not useful, but cool, you know. I uh, got attacked by a bunch of horrors. Uh, my god survived. And also one of the uh, ether warriors got attacked as well, who also survived. So, that's nice. And then some exchanges with Zoko again. Uh, Mushwood is the mercenaries, Blue Water is a underwater province. Uh, Cedarwood. I was building up stuff here. Where my Cyclops was. Probably units. Uh, so this goes pretty well because my Cyclops is just on hold and attack rear. There's only three mages here, a couple of bodyguards. Ether Warrior chopping up some water alleys too. Cyclops starts chopping through water alleys. However, uh, then we completely collapse at the back and my, <laughs> my Cyclops HP routes. Oh, which is a shame, you know. Uh, yeah, and then it turns out that 32 protection just isn't enough to protect you from uh, a bunch of water elementals, unfortunately. So, that's the end of the Cyclops experiment. That's a shame. Barely even killed anything. Uh, oh well. I was hoping I'd be able to link these guys up with the other little army we've got, but I guess that's over with. Uh, two more little exchanges there then, but then the, the big important battle, of course, is did we manage to get to Comseth in one piece? Uh, maybe not in one piece, but we do have some remaining uh, dregs. So that's good. Pretty big army. Wrath of Flames is up, Light of Northern Star is up, our adventurer did survive as well. Wait, hang on. You have 18 hit points? I never even realized. Alright, so the plan here is just... Can we horror mark people? We do interrupt a bunch of their spellcasting with um, Paralyze, which is great. And this made me so panicky. <laughs> I gets immediately clipped by an arrow. He's, he's, I gave him the robe of missile protection specifically to prevent this. Carrying the banner. Looks like he just about survives though. Communion slaves are communion slaving. We do get time stop off. So far, so good. More arrows heading for my banner holder. I don't think it matters at the moment though. Communion master, magic boost 2. Yeah, that's fine. Arrows just miss. Time stop is a very cool spell. And we do get the first uh, big horror mark spell off. So, if everything else goes wrong from this point forward, that's fine. That's 16 horror marks for everyone. So far, so good. A successful horror delivery, as far as I'm concerned. These are the paralyzing zizzers that we uh, summon, by the way. They're pretty cool. They do attract a lot of attention. They've got 78 hit points. There's another horror mark. That was a little baby horror mark spell, though, from one of the regular mages. So is that. Some more horror marks. Well, maybe that was a big one, because my Aethyla does get it off twice in this battle. I thought that was it.
Yeah, that was, that must have been it. So we got the little Hormark spell off once and the big one off twice. I can't remember how many marks the little one is. Was it three? I think the big one's 16 and the little one's three. That's 35 horror marks on everyone. That's got to be good, right? That's got to prompt some pretty big horror attacks on all the mages in this province. I'd be shocked if it didn't. Uh, so there's Comseth. <laughs> I'm happy with that result. I think that was really cool. We That was a very long, difficult march for these guys. To lay down those marks. Big congratulations to them. Uh, no interesting events this turn. I trolled out a lot of Zoko's scouts um, around my thrones and stuff this turn. Interestingly. Uh, and the throne of the Churning Ocean has been destroyed by Aegon the Eater of Dreams. So, I mean, big round of applause to Aegon for somehow managing to take that out. I don't know how Aegon got through all those water elementals underwater. Unless they just weren't patrolling by accident. Uh, either way, that does mean that we are now joint throne leader again. Yeah, we've got seven. Zoko also has seven. Willifors has six. Eight points are required. So, success draws closer. <laughs> Hopefully we attract a huge number of horrors to this province now as well. Um, I don't know, good turn, I think. Feels like things are okay now. And that's it for messages that are important. Ah oh, yeah, so this is now wrapped up. We have the mercenary solo who can start taking some more of these provinces around here. Seems pretty good to me. Um, we lost our little cyclops army here, unfortunately, so not much I can do here now. We might lose some more of this territory now over the next few turns, but I don't think it really matters. Probably fine. I'm just going to remain patrolling this throne. Uh, we do have this little army though. I might move that somewhere over here and maybe just threaten this throne. Maybe do the Hormog thing here, I don't know. I don't have too many mages. Um, I could move some mages through here, up, I don't know. We'll march it over here anyway. Uh, my god is casting Dispel. I'm going to Dispel the uh, Gift of Health that Zoko has this turn. I basically just alchemize all my gems into pearls and keep them above 200. And I think we had like 250 pearls or something. I just dumped them all into a massive dispel. Let's get rid of Gift of Health. Uh, this guy's going to enter Sight and Scry this province. See if we can see anything here. Do you get to see horror assassinations? I don't know. But we'll see what happens. Uh, and that's it for important stuff. The uh, Maker of Ruins is now in Parched. Looks like he didn't attack anything over here. Um, but I'm still patrolling caverns and stone heavens, so we'll defend if it comes. Uh, and that's it for this turn. Uh, these guys I was going to send into water, but I think I'm just going to build up a bunch of stuff inside this fort in case this sieges it. Because it would be easier to um, defend an actual fort if he storms with all these ether warriors. Might at least kill a few water elementals, that'd be fine. It would be nice if I could get some S2s over there. Do I have any shoes? I must have flying shoes somewhere that people use to get into this fort. Probably. I don't know, I'll see if I can get some S2s into Ivermark, but for now, um, yeah, that's the turn. Uh, so that was 113, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. Hello, welcome back. Uh, another message from Zatapak, end the suffering. Um, I, I do appreciate when people stay in the game though. You know what I mean? Like Zatapak doesn't have any thrones now. Is extremely small, has like one army, but they haven't gone AI, they're still playing. They're still trying to do stuff. I always really appreciate that. Uh, lots of people go AI on like turn 10 because they have bad expansion, but um, Nice when people stick around. Uh, anyway, I tried to dispel uh, Gift of Health. That was dispelled. Uh, we were then suddenly attacked by the Abomination of Desolation and killed instantly. Um, so, you know, my god did something.
Um, so we're going to try and call him back again. Uh, hopefully he doesn't lose too much astral magic. Uh, so Trani, no thrones, no problems. New prophet. Uh, tons of guys get assassinated this turn. That's pretty bad. Um, maybe um, maybe the number of horror marks going around increases. Don't know. Bunch of battles then. We spied uh, Zatapik trying to get his throne back. Awful lot of water elementals though. Uh, Zatapik of course does have the Zatapik strategy, uh, which is tons and tons of fountains of lightning. Cleans out the water rallies pretty effectively. Uh, these guys don't have chakras. Uh, unfortunately, there are also a lot of minotaurs here, so. He gets trampled in the end. But he has cleared out a lot of throne defenders here. Which is its own kind of victory. Uh, so there we go. Killed 7 of the Minotaur and 96 water rallies. And there already weren't that many defenders here in terms of mages. So that's pretty cool. We'll have to uh, keep an eye on things over there. Uh, we attacked a bunch of provinces. Hippocampus with some Ether Warriors. We took that. That's underwater. Ether Warriors do a lot better against units that... Um, well, I mean, these are Ictiads, so they're not exactly a huge threat anyway, but... Yeah, in this battle, they don't even get hit. Even when they're getting netted. God, they hit so hard. Just for an Ictia get hit for 53 damage. 50? Wow. That's crazy. Hit for 40, increase to 50 because it's slash. Yeah, 36 points of damage. I mean, they are two-handed swords, but yeah. Uh, Erebon we took with the uh, mercenaries. Uh, Umidor? Oh, that was neutral. We took that for the mercenaries as well. And then Elder Hill. We saw a couple of Minotaurs taking as well. So we didn't lose anything too interesting to Zoko this turn, and we took a bunch of provinces, which is good. Uh, events, we lost a bunch of gold and Beta, unfortunately. Uh, Dominion in Ragdon, lost population in Casian, lost tax in Tiny Willow. More horror stuff, uh, more patrolling and what have you. Uh, Vinogas attacking. Wait, what was that? I didn't check this until now. Forces of Camatan, Dummy Montag, 1808. Hmm. Interesting. So this must be the creature that causes an Ether Warrior to spawn. Because of the way the global has been implemented. Why can we see that in this phase? Uh, I don't know, but either way, we got attacked by um, some independence. What is that from? Oh, this Vineman stuff, okay. Alright, well that happened. Um, but that's basically it for messages. Um, so throne status is currently the same. Uh, we are making quite a few movements now though, which is interesting. Uh, we seem to be doing more as things go forwards. I thought we'd be doing less. Um, so over here, we don't really have an army anymore. Couldn't see anything happening here, but Zoko has teleported his god to defend this province now. Which seems to suggest he's lost some defenders here, I think. Or maybe his god was always here and I just didn't notice. Either way, we can see his god there now and that's about all we can tell. Can't see any assassinations, I don't think we'd be able to though. Uh, so the mercenaries are going to take some stuff around here. Scabiel's now in Saren Forest, there's lots of provinces he could move into. He could also move backwards to defend against this, but I'm going to go this way anyway because it would finally link these provinces together. We'd start getting the income from them. Although, uh, this is 0, 18, 25, 10, 22. Not exactly high value provinces, but I'll try and link them to my territory anyway. We'll continue trying to take stuff might as well. Uh, up here, I'm trying to defend against Scabiel, so 
provinces are just getting a handfuls of stuff. This one just has the flying units, but they're all holding attack rear, so I think if we kill the merit go, it's fine, right? Uh, this is still the same. This is my throne. This guy's getting nothing that can fly. Well, it's got. Yeah, these guys can fly as well. We'll try and just kill the marrow. But I've also got a bunch of ether warriors here and here on attack rear. So something should get on the marrow and kill it, I think. As long as we can get past the maker. Uh, we'll see. So just trying to defend against the maker of ruins over here. Up here we have a ton of ether warriors now. We built up so many. Um, last time I moved my army here to one of these provinces. Um, I ended up changing that and moving it into this fort. I, I did like a move patrol because I, I thought maybe these water alleys would attack this. So the stuff that was defending here I had patrolling and then the main army was somehow able to move from here to here on a move patrol action. So everything's here now and you can see we, we have so many ether warriors here now as well. Pretty cool. Uh, and there's more joining up. So there's just like a giant block of ether warriors now. This is going to continue increasing too. It's kind of cool. We might end up with like 50 ETH warriors in this area with this little army. And same sort of thing happening up here. I'm just putting together some mages and some more ETH warriors. So yeah, I think we can still try and march around defending against the water trolleys and maybe attacking this throne. Just to try and kill some throne defenders. Or maybe do some horror marks. And yeah, I got one ETH warrior here trying to take this. We'll see if that's successful. Have these three take another water province. Uh, lots of ether warriors. We're trying to put down temples as well to keep our dominion up. We built a temple in Ikrema last turn, which is now under threat from the Maker of Ruins, unfortunately. And we're getting another temple down in Centania now as well. Our dominion is holding at 11. Be nice to get it back to 12. Other than that, Nothing else happening. I am calling God again with some of my priests. Not all of them, though. But that's the turn. Uh, so that was turn 114, so thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. Hello, welcome back. Uh, there's a battle in Robber Home. Some demon knights attack Zoko. That's one of Zoko's thrones. Uh, someone also sent 25 iron flies at my necromancer mercenary company. Uh, so that was the end of that guy. A bunch of assassinations then, as usual. Uh, we took deep sea with some ether warriors. So one of the battle in robber home. Um, sent one ether warrior into Cedarwood, but we were not successful there. Uh, Dampdale, province that Zoka moved into at the Maker of Ruins, so he moved backwards. Uh, and Troll Peaks, which one was that? More mercenaries. Uh, first up, though, we have some battles in Robberholm. So this is Ruva attacking Zoko's throne. I think this is the throne that um, Zatapek tried to take last turn. Because the defenders have been reduced pretty severely. Because like these guys can't really damage Ruva either. I mean, they've got two attacks per round. I guess Ruva is ethereal and has 20 protection. Probably not the best punching target. Yeah, this is actually a struggle for... Um, Okay. That was Robber Home. There were also some things inside the fort, I guess. Ah, uh, but they also do not last very long. Ah, uh, so this time the throne in Robber Home was de was uh, destroyed. That was the Silver Throne. Which means we won. Uh, so, oh <laughs> uh, yeah, that's it. We were successful. So there we have it. Um, Genjian has finally been brought to a close. Uh, and if you ask me, great way to end the game as well. <laughs> really, it, of all the ways the game could have ended, 
Probably my favourite. Um, definitely the one I would have went for. Before anything else, let's uh, click the view history button. I'm always intrigued by this. Not very often you get to see this. So there were some players we didn't really get to see much. Gondwald and uh, the piggybacking guy died pretty pretty soon. Did a bit of turtling and then we sort of rushed Kurgnir. Looks like Zoko and um, Zatapik had some exchanges early on too. Here's us taking Kurgnir. Not a lot of wars, it doesn't feel like. The world is pretty stable for a long time. We move through a boy beer then. Uh, Lilifors was always very big. Looks like Zoko took pieces off uh, all the nations around the edge of him. <laughs> Spread down through here, took all these thrones. Wow, really long game. You can see how the main four players in the end were me, Lilifor, Zoko, and Citrani as well. Who had a ton of dominion around here. In blood sacking all game. And Zoko ended very big as well. Amazing that Icea lasted all the way to the end as well, that's kind of cool. I'm very intrigued as to how Icea has these provinces, but then also these three. It's pretty interesting. Oh yeah, so there's the history of the world. Nine years. Ah, uh, good stuff. Right, so I guess the next order of business is to look through the graphs and stuff. We'll see what the graphs look like. Um, first though, as always, uh, thank you for watching. Hope you've enjoyed it. Um, thanks to all my patrons who've been supporting me, supporting the channel and all that stuff. Uh, if you've enjoyed this series and you're not subscribed, consider subscribing. Uh, or at least, you know, like the video and leave a comment and all that stuff. Uh, and thanks, as always, for all the support. Let's check out the uh, graphs, though. Okay, it's going to be a little bit difficult to kind of go through this because the, the lines of the the lines don't always match up with the flags, I don't think. Yeah, Lilifors is... Uh, no, that's Chibnasu. They're a dark blue line. And Lilifors is... Indigo or something. Okay. Um, I'll focus on my stuff, though. And I can tell Zoko's as well. They were the number two for a while. So in terms of provinces, we were always basically the largest player, which is pretty cool. And then uh, Lilifors and Zoko. Uh, and then we had lots and lots of exchanges with Zoko in the end. Uh, forts. Only really learned much from forts. Um, we had a lot of them though. So, you know. I suppose that's good. Uh, income is a crazy one. I did not realise how good our income was relative to everybody else. We had such a gigantic income lead over everybody. I suppose that might just come down to the fact that we had a lot of capitals. We had our cap, Kurgnir's cap, Boibia's cap, um, and lots of good territory around those as well. I'm not sure, I mean, it seems like we have almost like twice most other people's income. Which is pretty nuts when you think about it. I'm not sure how our income was that good, to be honest. I mean, we did have very good scales as well, though, right? We had mostly positive scales, and then we got growth on top of that as well. I mean, it's cool, anyway. Uh, gen income usually just follows provinces, but um, in our case we had a lot of globals. I guess the um, the one global we had that generates gems through events wouldn't show up on this. So the, the amount of gems we had for most of the game is actually probably much greater even than this, which is pretty wild. But um, yeah, we were pretty aggressive about site searching though, since I just desperately wanted gems. 
Um, but again, yeah, we were like a massive leader in terms of gem economy as well. Azoko does catch up, but I think that's because they just take my provinces. <laughs> and all, my, all my provinces were like heavily searched. Um, and he had the um, water gem global as well. Looks like Lilith was really stalled halfway through the game. Uh, research. Research is always a funny one because like... For most of the game I was like, what, fourth in research? And that's even though I had magic three and I was like trying to do loads of research, which is pretty funny. Uh, it looks like Lilifors was the research leader for the entire game. I guess Zoko has the lead in the end, but um, like most people just don't bother researching blood unless they're going to use it. Uh, Dominion, big Dominion lead. Had uh, Dominion 13, I think, at one point in the game, and then 12 for most of it. Even at the end when we lost all those underwater lakes, we still had Dominion 11. Um, so Trani was a blood sack nation. Kind of see their line at Cyan. Um, so they were holding their own on Dominion as well. But, um, yeah, we pretty much dwarf everybody. Army size. I mean, Zoku just has a billion water elementals, so... Yeah. Um, we're... I mean, we, we had a big lead on everybody for most of the game here as well, but, um... A lot of that is going to be harpies, though, right? We had an awful lot of harpies everywhere. Awful lot of skeletons sitting in um, our thrones as well. So it's not high quality stuff. I think the thing that's scary about Zoko, of course, is that they have a huge army score, but it's all like size 6 water elementals that have a fear aura, which is like significantly more um, impactful than a bunch of harpies and skeletons. Um, yeah, it's probably kind of crazy how much army they had, actually. Nobody else comes close. What is this line? Who is that? I had a big drop off. Ah, Zatabag. Hmm. If something terrible happened to Zatapek halfway through the game, is that their little war with me? Because they also like wiped out my whole stack, but you can barely see any like dips on my line. That's also pretty crazy. Uh, and ascension points. Um, yeah. <laughs> we <laughs> we ended up with the most. Cool stuff. Uh, what did we have in the end? So, 6 to win, and we had, um, 7. Wow, Lilithor's finished 2nd. Poor Zoko. Just had all the thrones blown up. Uh, what else can we look at? Hall of Fame? I mean... <laughs> I guess shoutouts to Curran, the, uh, Marrow, who's the only... the only thing in the Hall of Fame that isn't a big Lilithor's giant. Uh, so that's something, you know. Congrats there. I don't think there's much else to say here. Um, so that is officially the end of Gen Gen. I might ask the remaining players if they have any other... Uh, any messages they would like to appear at the very end of this video. But besides that, I think... I'm going to leave it there. Um, so this was a lot of fun. I really enjoy uh, Magic Gen games. Nation Gen's pretty cool as well. I think it does need some aggressive um, curating of the nations that gets generated though, because... There's some busted stuff in uh, Nation Gen as far as I'm aware. Uh, I think this game was a little bit long though. I think maybe a turn... What was it? Like turn on 100 Cataclysm? It was a bit late. Um, might have been a bit better if this game was a bit shorter, but... I don't know, I started get to get in the swing of things when... Um, after a while. It turned out you didn't really need that much thrown defense. It was fun trying to like march a little army here in Horrormark, everybody. Uh, yeah, but thanks again for watching. Uh, I hope you've enjoyed it. Please do let me know if you have. Uh, let me know if you'd like to see another Gen Gen style game on the channel. Uh, I know it's not the most popular series and... Um, well, it is now also my longest series, so... I guess there's a lot of it if you do enjoy these types of games. And I think the next game going up on this channel is going to be Solaria, unless something goes really wrong, so you got that to look forward to. Uh, so hopefully I'll see you then. Thanks a final time for watching, and I'll see you around. It's over. I would have had a chance if I'd managed to take Urful, but I just didn't have enough dudes, I think. Aw, sad day. I feel like the dang doom horrors just clobbered on me and nobody else. Well... I look forward to being eulogized in Muse videos as a worthy opponent and true general. If I can't be God, 
I'm legit real proud of my Glamour Cauldron Army supported by an Astral Fetters dude to prevent mass returning. Wait was I really number one in research all game? I didn't even make any research boosters. Woo, I survived to the end. Mission accomplished. Hell yeah, blue lizard friends. I never really recovered from getting my pretender killed by Heat Aura, even if I did eventually kill the person that started an early war with me, if not for that the war would have gone much faster and maybe I would have done something that mattered other than killing a few thugs, it's over. Fear not, I am a merciful god. I push open a big door labeled pain hell, and lead you all in. Grimacing emoji. I never really recovered from being double rushed early, just sort of stabilized from it. But I was a flying blood sack nation so getting double rushed was super understandable. If I had been left alone for another year I probably would have been way more of a factor beyond being a landmine. I was way weaker outside of my dominion. Also I'll take that as I saved the world from Ram. Just want to say I left it all on the field, no ragrets. Point out that my leakos were extremely cool and hilarious.